Hi, and welcome back to my shed. My name is Paul Hopewell, and I make all sorts of stuff using whatever I can lay my hands on. In this short video I'm going to show you how I mapped out the V-ways on my South Bend 13 lathe. During the last video, part 2, I showed you how I took a few minutes off to make some straight edges. <clears throat> These straight edges are key instruments to finding errors on the V-ways and they're to provide me with a useful solution to rectifying them. But before I can get going I need to remove a filler plate and clean all the ways. My oil or suds tray hasn't got a drain hole in it, not yet, but if it had I would make sure that my suds tray remained biased towards the outlet hole. We'll see about putting one in sometime. But for now I'm just going to make sure that the main bed is set up without any twist as best I possibly can. There are a lot of things to contend with regarding the bedway on this machine. There are a total of 20 machined faces along its entire length. Seven of them are slideways, two of them are recessed guideways, three of them are clamping faces, and the remainder are, as far as I can see, reference faces. All of them have to be true to each other along the entire length of the bed, especially regarding level, parallel, angles and twist. Remember, in part one I said that I will never be able to make the bedways as good as the professionals, but I'm jolly well going to have a go at improving them from what they are. With that in mind, I've somehow got to find a way of mapping out what I've got with what I've got, if that makes sense. The reason for establishing the current condition of each slide is obvious, but what I'm looking for are the best or least worn faces, and indeed I really need three good ones. One must be an underface, one has to be a side face, and the last one has to be a top face. More would be a bonus. Why? Well, the contraption I have in mind will rely on a minimum of three true faces to get the best out of any error should they exist. I'll explain about the contraption when I make it, but for now I have to map out what I've got. As I stated earlier, the bedway has to be set without any twist and since placing the lathe in its final resting place, well at least I hope it is, I've been keeping an eye on it, so it should still be okay. To start with I used the straight edge to identify high spots along each of the slideways. But the slideways are longer than the straight edges I hear you say. Yes they are, but on my lathe the worn sections appeared to be approximately 500mm long. That's why I only made one metre long straight edges and not two metre ones. If I had made two metre long straight edges, it would have taken me forever to get them right. Anyway, using the straight edges and engineer's blue, I discover that the front underface and both recessed faces were as flat as they possibly could be according to the straight edges. That just has to be good news, doesn't it? So far I've come to the conclusion that the saddle slides are in need of repair and that I've got three faces that from the straight edge point of view are in good order. However, while looking at the possibility of using the tailstock slide for gauging purposes I made a surprising discovery. Both recesses are one inch wide. Not really that remarkable you would think, but I've got two parallels and they are one inch thick. Well, four tenths of a thou under, but to all intents and purposes they are one inch thick. And they fit in the recesses beautifully, without play, and yet they slide back and forth with a very little friction. My next surprise was to find that both of these recessed faces were in fact parallel. To prove it, I bolted and locked both parallels together with a simple threaded bar. And to prove that the two recesses were parallel, I did a simple slide check. Simply sliding them up and down the parallel recesses should see them bind up if the two recesses weren't parallel. 
As a double check, I used a mag mount sat on top of one of the parallels, in turn supporting a DTI on top of the other parallel. In theory, if the first parallel was being tipped over, even by the slightest amount, the mag mount would also be tipped over with it. This would display a major error on the DTI. Therefore, if the two recessed guides were not running parallel to each other, then the bottoms of the parallels would be forced together or apart, causing a large discrepancy at the DTI. This process was also repeated the other way round, but I found no issues here. So that I didn't lose track of things, I put together a bunch of data sheets to record measurements along a given face and from what face the measurements were taken. All the other slides were then measured relative to these two parallel recesses using a simple method of linked parallels as a base for the mag mount and DTI. The front face was proven to have a high spot between 600mm and 1200mm using the straight edge. It was also confirmed using the DTI and the error was shown to be 0.05mm, about 2000 My 16 inch vernier also proven it to be about 2000 out at exactly the same spot. With a little bit of scraping I'm sure I can correct this small error to become a straight and usable face. When finished it'll be my second proven face. I did think that I would need to make a, a narrow repeater meter. But because I've managed to get lots of information using the devices I already have, I'll leave that for another day. Here you can see me measuring the first group of slides, both the inside and outside faces. I also did the same to the second group. The first group of measurements repeated the 0.05mm tooth out error displayed on the DTI and the vernier. The second group of measurements were all but perfectly parallel. I ran measurements between both and front rear groups of slides using the stick mic and after calculations they sort of agreed with the figures provided by the vernier, give or take 0.02mm, almost a thou either way. I did take the opportunity to find out how much wear there was on the top flats of each of the two front and back V-ways. For the most part they were parallel until the area near the chuck was checked. It showed a 0.013 dip on the front which is about 5 thou and a 0.09 millimetre dip on the back one which is almost 4 thou. One more thing I measured was the amount of sag in the main carriageway V slides to understand how it would affect the saddle, if at all. To check this I used a ground roller, a V block and a micrometer. By putting the V block on the V slide then putting the roller on the top of that, the micrometer was able to take a measurement. After making a record of all the measurements along its length, a dip of 0.052mm, that's 20.5 thou, was recorded. On the furthest V-slide a dip of 0.014mm was evident, that's about 5.5 thou. From all this I will have the three required surfaces to assist me in correcting the surprisingly large amount of wear on the main saddle bearing faces. I now know that when it's time to sort out the V-slides I've got my work cut out. For now I've got to get back on with the scraping process to remove the error from the front face. When I've finished scraping that last one face I can get on with making some sort of contraption to correct the main carriage V-slides, but that's for another video. Again thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.